Yes, as uh, Shafi mentioned, soil nitrate testing protocol development for lands receiving injected manure is the title of my presentation. I am Rob Lyon. I work in animal science at Penn State University and work out of the main campus at University Park. Um, our project is centered in uh, Center County and at our Rock Springs facility, but we do have some external work going in. Uh, involved in some external counties. We're going to talk a lot about those today. Most of this work that we did or are going to discuss was done at our Sustainable Dairy <coughs> Cropping Systems project, a very large project. A lot of good work coming out of that project. This is just a small component of it and I think a fairly simple uh, story to tell. Uh, with shallow disk injection, previous work has showed us that in the mid-Atlantic region, shallow disk injection really does have a lot of benefits for us. If you uh, are not familiar with it, shallow disk injection is basically just bringing culture through the soil, dropping the manure in behind, and having some kind of closing disk behind that. And um, advance here. I've got more animation here than I realized I had to cough up. You can see the manure is in a four inch, four or five inch deep slot. And looking uh, along the rows, we have 30 inch spacing with our uh, disc injection. Here are just a photo of what that looks like compared to broadcast uh, applications. So both of these rates broadcast on my side, on the far side, injected manure, both of those rates being about 6,000 gallons of dairy liquid per acre. Some benefits of manure injection include uh, a consistency with no-till farming. So we are disturbing with the shallow disk type injection less than 30% of the surface area across the uh, perpendicular to the row and NRCS. Uh, it does accept that for no-till systems. I feel like my microphone's not quite right here. Uh, we do have decreases in odor when we inject manure, decreases in the loss of ammonia, so we retain more nitrogen in the soil, and we have shown uh, with previous work that dissolved phosphorus is less likely to run off, and total phosphorus runoff is decreased as well. So benefit is in uh, lands that have high phosphorus soils or a high phosphorus index soil because they can now apply the norm at a phosphorus balance rate and uh, have a better nitrogen uh, to phosphorus balance within that soil. There are trade-offs, of course. Some means and trade-offs include that it's a slower process. It's narrower. Adoption in our uh, region has been slow. A lot of producers will not accept this as uh, the constraints of time and e economics help to uh, impede this. We only get small windows of opportunity to apply the manure, and you got to get a lot of manure out there when those windows are available. Um, more compaction could occur because we have to pass uh, the field more frequently. So timing also uh, implies that we have to have soil conditions that are correct. <coughs> so what we want to do a discuss and look at in particular was a pre cidrus nitrate test for corn, the PSNT test. This test is done in mid-season, early season, when the corn is 12 inches or so tall at the, about the six-leaf stage. A 12 inch deep core is taken, you take a number of these across the field, composite those and actually send it to the, to the uh, lab once you dry it or freeze it and get a nitrate reading. Normal soil test would not have a nitrogen uh, report, but in this case we are looking at the nitrate level. In our state, in Pennsylvania, the cutoff is 21 parts per million. If you have 21 parts per million in that nitrate test, that's implying that you have enough nitrogen to sustain the growth for the rest of the season. If you're below it, if you're at 20 or 16, there's a calculation, there's a fact sheet that a producer would use to determine how much side dressing of nitrogen, either commercial fertilizer or manure, they would need to put on the field. And that would sustain the growth. So one of the problems with this PSNT test and injected manure in the banded concentrations that we have with nitrogen is that it becomes suspect on the grounds receiving more because you could go out and put the probe in the soil and take random cores and end up hitting the, hitting the band several times in a row and get an artificially high 
non-representative uh, number, or you could miss the ban and be right in clean and get a low number and pay for fertilizer that you don't really need. So our purpose of this work was to determine a, a PSNT sampling protocol for soils receiving injected manure. If you look at this uh, diagram, the uh, brown stripes up there are just simple representation of what the 30 inch spacing of the banded manure would look like. And the round circles are just some 12 inch core samples that we would take for PSNT sampling. And some ideas, these are just some, some ideas. What would be a good protocol to really get a representative sampling? And is there a pattern that we can implement at the farm level uh, that can be repeatable and uh, used in any field? So what we started to do uh, with this project, one of the components was just taking these uh, what we call monolith samples, and these are just 30 inch by 12 inch deep um, profiles that are taken out of the soil and um, analyzed in 30 samples. So every inch across here we are taking a sample across, so we end up with 30 samples. I have a video, which did work earlier, to show you what our monolith sample looks like. That's what we're doing. We're taking that profile out of the soil. We're actually using um, a backhoe to excavate it, and you can get a feel for what that profile looks like. We uh, sometimes get it down to as deep as 20 inches, but of course we only need the top 12. Once we have that profile in, that monolith sampler, we take it out, we uh, take off on the sides, we lay it down, and uh, you expose the soil, mark where 12 inches are, and then carefully remove the 31 inch samples across that profile. And at, um, at about inch 15, we will have the band marked. So going into this, we had the band marked, and this is a perpendicular area across that. It does add up to a lot of samples, and um, you know, we, we dry those quickly and get those to the lab. Now in 2012, the uh, sampling uh, site had four different treatments. We had a control with no more broadcast manure, which is simply put on its surface uh, without any tillage. We had broadcast immediately followed by tilling. So we took that manure, immediately worked it in a profile, uh, in theory, at, a, at an even distribution across the entire, entire uh, profile at chisel depth. And then we had this shallow disc injection. These are not a lot of great, not, uh, you know, not a lot of treatments here, but uh, we can show you that our mean nitrate at the PSNT time on a composite sample uh, was, was higher than a shallow disk. And when we start to look at the profile of each one of these individual uh, one inch sample pores and uh, work with the data, you can see that we get a side wave. And that's probably not too surprising if you think about it, uh, but we did confirm that we were getting a sine wave with the zero here being the distance from the band out to 15. But we saw this uh, consistently with our project. So to look at our, um, our sampling technique, others have suggested a two-point system where you have one in the band and one out of the band and pair those samples and do a number of those and composite them and get a PSNT uh, result. And we looked at those uh, in the band and out and we also slid these in 15 inch increments along our, along our scale. So in other words, looking, if we went out to the field and ran the total 15 inch spaced apart samples, how would we measure them? Uh, it's often uh, impossible to find those bands, even you know, six weeks after the north injected, the planters went through there and we've had some rain, so it's pretty hard sometimes to find those bands if you don't have them marked. And we wanted a, a process that we could use where we did not have, have bands marked. 
If we took that, those two spaces, the two cores, and we compared them uh, with the mathematics we have of our, our other cores, and we looked at cores that were sampled uh, six inches apart, and found that uh, 20 cores that were six inches apart, in other words, five sets, or four sets, excuse me, four sets of these five cores were better than 10 sets of 15 inch space cores. So I flew away all the way across the country to tell you that's, that's my story right there. <laughs> So, I'm sorry, yeah, that's right. So when we get to 20 cores, once we start to look at how many, how many times we can repeat this, if we get to 20 cores, uh, we find that both our samples with the two core system or the five cores uh, space at six inches, actually end up coming up with the same mean of 17 parts per million across a couple seasons. And our standard deviation dropped quite a bit with this system. So this is the recommendation that we're coming into uh, with this system. Now our next step is to actually do some verification with this process and we're out uh, over the past couple seasons. We'll do it over this season uh, at our, our county sites and start to verify that we are indeed seeing uh, this protocol work and confirm that it does. And we're doing side-by-side uh, -side trials like this at several county sites where we have broadcast manure versus injected manure. Adding on to that a lot of nitrogen uh, rate so we can get up uh, nice response curve of things. And I also, before I, uh, well, I had the floor, one to mention the North American Nor Expo. We are having that in Pennsylvania, in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. It will be July 14th is our tour day. We have four different tours lined up, so much like what we see here tomorrow, it's hard to choose which tour is correct. We have, we're gonna have that in Pennsylvania. We have a dairy tour, poultry tour, and ag Nor agitation tour you know, equine beef small farm tour. So our theme for the 2015 Menor Culinary Menor Expo is Menor Expo, Menorah than you can handle. So when you come, please choose carefully. You can find out more about that on our website. And with that, I'll wrap up and take questions. Yes, Do you know the approximate analysis of your dairy manure going up to 6,000 gallons? Yeah, so, um, it was pretty typical dairy manure analysis for what we see in our area. And I can't spit the numbers off the top of our head, but I would say it's about uh, NPK value of uh, 25, 18, uh, 25, maybe, maybe 28. The total, correct? Total nutrients available? Correct, That's, okay. that, those are pounds per thousand gallons, P205, K2O. So I'll, I'll jump back up. We the the, the manure came from a function of dairy acetates to the Tennessee farm closest in special uh, formulated to this year or Tennessee Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, typically we would have more applied and we would mark the bands, and thankfully we could do that because many times it's very hard to go out there from that corner, you know, it's getting taller, and we had uh, the plan go through the field as well as some rain and some surface from the weather, and many times it's very hard to find those sort of bands. On a county plot, a county level plot, learn a lot of our lessons with different ground cover, and you know, planning to different uh, scenarios of like residue, uh, sometimes very hard to find them. Uh, they don't have hands to be for digging for five minutes until you have to strike that thing out. Okay. A uh, great point, if I wasn't clear about that. Uh, part of the part of the beauty of this protocol is that. Can I repeat the question? Okay. Part of the, so the question is, uh, it's it's uh, not practical to ask the producer to mark the band. So the reason I'm asking is, how is the protocol going to come in on the 